Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech with Megha and I hope you all are doing well. So in today's video, we're going to talk about day-to-day -day activity of a DevOps engineer. So many of you have asked me on my YouTube channel's comment section that uh, what are the activities or what are the tasks that has been performed by a DevOps engineer. So with my experience and what are the tasks that I perform in my day-to-day -day life, being in a DevOps role, so I would be sharing those details with you and I hope that those things or the things that I share with you will clear your doubt. So stay tuned till the end of the video and let's begin it. So the first thing that I do when I start my work is uh, I check my calendar to see if there are any calls being scheduled. So let me tell you what type of calls we need to attend. So you would have a stand-up call. So this stand-up call will be about uh, 10 to 15 minutes of duration. Uh, this is a call where you will be giving the details about how much progress you have made on the task that you're working. And also if you are having any issues or if you are stuck with a blocker, you would share those details with your team and try to solve it. So this call uh, is of around 10 to 15 minutes of duration and it is a day, uh, daily stand-up call. Uh, the other call that is called as demo call. So demo call is a way where uh, you can showcase the task that you have worked or uh, anything that you have implemented. So for example, it might be a pipeline that you have implemented and we have to showcase that uh, demo it in front of our client so that we can get the updates and uh, if we have any feedback uh, from that we can incorporate that and update uh, the pipeline or the task that you have worked on and the other call is like um, your developers will come up to you and uh, if they are facing any issues so these calls may be of around two minutes or five minutes of duration like you need to have a one-on-one -on -one call with them just to understand where, what is the issue or what is missing in that so these are the type of calls that we have to go through so now my real work starts so what i do is uh, I check the critical environments. So every project might have some critical environments that needs to be up and running so that developers can work and they don't have any kind of blockers. So I check those environments to see if there are any space issue or any kind of memory issue. So I check it through the Grafana dashboard and then I try to log in into the critical environment. So we do have some critical clusters. So there are login, I check the pods, check the status of the pod if it is showing running successfully and uh, try to see if they, if any pod is uh, stuck with any crash loop back of error or image pull back of error any kind of errors so just to see that the critical environments are up and running so that developers won't face any issue and they do not get blocked solving developers issue so developers will reach out to you whenever they are stuck or they have any kind of blockers and if they are facing any uh, DevOps related issue. So what are the types of issues that you might encounter? So the first thing is like a Kubernetes issue. They will reach out to you if uh, their pod is stuck in some pending state or uh, your pod is uh, having crash loop back of error, image pull back of error. So you being a DevOps engineer have to fix the pod and bring it back up in the running state. So how do I do it? So I try to check the logs of the pod. Then I try to describe the pod to see what is the error or what are the logs, why it is actually failing. Sometimes the issues might be like um, the image that they are using is not correct. The image name might not be correct. And we need to update it, go back into the YAML file, update the correct image name so that uh, you can uh, run the pipeline again and your pod will be up and running. Sometimes the image that they have mentioned is not at all present in the Docker Hub. So in such case, you, it won't able to pull that particular image and your pod will be having issues. So these are the types of issues that your developers will come up to you. And the other kind of issues will be like uh, developers will reach out to you telling that they have made some update in the code and for some reason their updated code is not getting picked up. So in such cases, we have to check the pipeline that has been configured to see if the changes that they have done 
is uh, having the correct branch mentioned and see the pipeline's yaml file check the branch name and see if the changes is matching with the correct branch they have mentioned in the yaml file so uh, and rerun the pipeline again and um, the other thing is that uh, if there is a new team in your project and uh, you might be reached out to create a new pipeline for that team similar to the others team so this is also one kind of task that you have to perform you will be assigned tasks such as uh, any kind of feature or there is any kind of bug fixes that you need to do so this is also a kind of task that a devops engineer will do and sometimes um, you will be getting migration kind of task. So what are these migration tasks? In these tasks, uh, if the company wants to uh, get updated to the latest DevOps technology, in, in such cases, we, we try to search what are the latest DevOps tools, whether we can incorporate that in our project and how we can implement it. You being the DevOps engineer would require to do a small kind of POC where you can understand the features of it, whether it will be suitable for your project or not. So that is a way that you have to do. Apart from solving developers issue, you will be assigned a task that you will be working on. And uh, what, are, what are those tasks? Like what kind of tasks you will be assigned? And those tasks will be like uh, creating some pipelines. Uh, depends upon what kind of CICD tool you are using in your company, in your project. So it may be like Travis CI, Circle CI, and uh, for the CD part, it may be Argo CD, Jenkins, Flux CD. Depends upon the company. There will be tasks such as uh, some, some tasks are performed manually in your project, and you have to find out this manual uh, intervention and automate it with the help of the pipeline, as well as scripting also is involved in that. So this is where your scripting knowledge will actually help. And um, the concepts that you studied, right, uh, during your DevOps journey, or when you actually started learning concepts like version control, uh, like uh, containerization, orchestration, all these kind of concepts will come to play in these kind of situations. And when you want to decide which tool would be suitable for your company, that's where the concept of GitOps, DevOps will actually uh, help you. So if you have good understanding of the concept, you would be able to suggest the correct tool uh, according to your project's requirement. One thing I want to say that um, when we uh, are approached by developers, uh, if they are facing any issues or you yourself is working on a task and you are stuck and you're looking for a solution. So what we do, we usually search in Google, right? See if there are any solution provided. We make use of stack overflows, right? So I want to say that this is best way of learning, I can say, you know, because when you keep on searching, you get to know more things about it. You get to understand the tool much better. So it's a good way of learning also. So the last thing I want to say is uh, self-learning. Uh, try to update yourself with the latest technologies that are coming up. I understand that uh, sometimes it becomes difficult uh, to spend time for ourselves. But uh, even if you can spare one hour for yourself and uh, start learning it, that would be a better way. I can suggest that uh, take up a concept. Say, for example, you take up a concept as GitOps. And we don't know what GitOps is all about. Uh, learn about it, read about it. You'll get to know what GitOps is. And once you understand the concept, then you can move on to how it is implemented. What are the tools? How does it work? So slowly, if you can remove one hour uh, daily, that would be helpful for you. And uh, your learning curve will be like, it will be going on. So try to remove some, at least one hour for yourself. Thank you for watching my video till the end. Let me know your doubts and questions in the comment section and I'll try to answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.